Hello and welcome to Tete a Tete France 24's flagship interview show. Our guest today is Catherine Russell. She is the executive director of the UN's Children's Fund, UNICEF, and she joins us from Brussels. Thank you very much, Mrs. Russell. Of course. Thanks. Nice to see you, Mark. Let me begin with Gaza. The head of the UN Reliefs and Works Agency for Palestinian Refugees, UNRWA, said, quote unquote, this is a war on children. More children have been killed in four months of war in Gaza than in four years of wars around the globe. How many children have been killed in Gaza, according to you? Well, UNICEF doesn't have independent numbers. The reported numbers are around 13,450. But, you know, that's that, that's not a number that we know for sure. It's a number that we expect is probably on the low end. And um, we know that children are dying. We know that children are trapped in the rubble. Uh, we also know that children are wounded and that they are separated many times from their families. And we're very worried about children who are unaccompanied and kind of making their own way. Um, you, you're showing a picture. You can see the devastation. I mean, it, it's a horrifying thing to imagine children living through that. Well, in addition to those who are dying, who are wounded, those surviving are now on the verge of famine, according to a report uh, put together by a core group of UN agencies and international relief groups. It says that half of Gaza's population is struggling with catastrophic hunger and starvation, the highest number of people ever recorded facing catastrophic hunger. How dire is the situation? You know, it, it's incredibly dire. And I think the thing to, to remember is that this is a very much a sort of man-made problem in that it's not because there is a, you know, an earthquake or a drought. This is because there's a conflict. And that is something that, you know, at the end of the day, we can all do better here. We can make sure that children, uh, regardless of how they got into the situation, should be protected. They should be fed. We can't have children uh, on the verge of starvation. And, and I have to say, you know, Mark, I've seen this in, in many places, what, what it means for a child to be so severely malnourished that they're, that they're on the verge of dying. And it is a horrific thing to see. No child should go through that. Uh, you know, it's a painful situation for them. It's just, it's, it's heartbreaking to imagine what children are going through. And I think all of us in the international community Community just have to do better here and make sure that we can get aid into these children. Right. Uh, you said it was man-made. Uh, the uh, EU foreign policy uh, chief at the Conference on Humanitarian Aid in Brussels, uh, where you're speaking from, Joseph Borrell, actually said something more. He said that it's Israel-made, that Israel is provoking famine, and that starvation is being used as a weapon of war. Do you share his assessment? You know, this I, I would say this in every situation that UNICEF works, where there is war, where there is conflict, it is horrific for children. Right? Children depend on government services. They need food. They need education. They need health care. <clears throat> and in situations where that's all disrupted, it's absolutely brutal for children. And I see it over and over and over again. And I just, as the adults here, you know, the, war is not the business of children. It is the business of adults. And adults have to do better and make sure that regardless of, of what their disputes are with each other, that children and innocents are protected. And that's not happening here. And we need to do better. Is Israel committing war crimes in Gaza? Well, look, a war crime, that, that's not something that UNICEF gets involved in making those determinations. Those are legal determinations that are typically made by some sort of a, a court. What I can say is that children are suffering, <clears throat> excuse me, that we are very concerned about what's happening. We cannot have children starving to death. That is not acceptable. And all of us need to do better to protect these innocent children and make sure that they have some sort of a future. I mean, I have to say, in addition to all the terrible things that we've discussed already, these children are also not in school. Right. What does that look like for their future? You know, every country talks about the future, the future. Well, the future is children. Children need to be healthy. They need to be protected. They need to be educated. And we all have a responsibility to make sure that happens. Uh, we've seen airdrops. We've seen a uh, boat with humanitarian aid being uh, sent from uh, Cyprus. We're seeing the U.S. Uh, try to build a floating pier off of uh, the Gaza coast. Uh, does it save children or is it just a drop in the ocean? 
Well, I think both, right? I think it does. It, it helps. Every little bit helps for sure. But the key for us, and, and I've heard this from our people there repeatedly, we need more access from the roads. I mean, when you look at the stuff that came in from the um, on the pier, uh, I think it was yesterday, the day before, that was uh, maybe like 12 truck worth of, of goods, right? We need hundreds of trucks going into Gaza every single day, taking in food, taking in medical supplies, taking in, and this is really important from UNICEF's perspective, we provide what is known as therapeutic food for babies because babies can't eat regular food, right? That doesn't do them any good. We need to get in for them and for the and for mothers who are breastfeeding therapeutic food that will keep them alive. And that requires us to move that product in there and we need more access in order to do that. Do you understand why Israel is restricting access to this aid? Well, look, I mean, there are different discussions about, you know, what, what's known as dual use. You know, I, I, I mean, from our perspective, it took us about four months to get plastic pipes in to, to Gaza. You know, we've had things turned around because there's a small scissors in the in the truck. I mean, I think, you know, we're not able to get portable toilets in. For whatever reason people have, we need to do better and we need to get more access for the products that people need there. And I think there's no question that we need to get more food into the, into the strip and we all all, as I said, we all need, we have a responsibility as a world community to do better. Everyone needs to do better and really encourage all the parties to make sure that this happens. What if Israel decides to attack Rafa? Well, uh, you know, I, I was in Rafa a few months ago and essentially what's happened is, you know, the population has been progressively moved south. There are two million people who've been moved uh, in, into different parts of the Gaza Strip. Rafa is the very tip. And really, for the people who are there now, people who have been able to get out of there have, have already tried to get out. The people who are left are the most vulnerable people. I can't imagine, having seen it, I just can't imagine where anyone thinks these people are going to go, right? I don't know where they go. They're vulnerable. There are a lot of, as I said, children who are alone there, people who don't have any resources resources, people who are hungry. You know, we see hundreds of people using one toilet. I mean, it's a godforsaken situation in the first place. And then to make it worse, I think it's just really hard to imagine how anyone thinks that that's going to work. I want to turn to Haiti, another major uh, crisis. How would you describe the situation in a country that's already seen a lot of uh, problems in the past? Yeah. Haiti is a very, very sad situation. I, I was there a few months ago. Uh, it is so violent. It, it's almost hard to describe some of the stories I heard. I, I met with one woman who was telling me the story of, you know, she had been attacked by a group of men and raped, and which was horrific to hear. But then she told me that her sister, who was with her, fought back against this group of rapists, and they, she fought so hard that they burned her alive. I mean, I, it's almost unimaginable to hear a story like that. I met an 11-year-old girl who had been raped and was pregnant. I mean, there are terrible, terrible things happening there. I, I, I worry, uh, you know, about how that situation can get settled down because there's just so much violence, and it's hard to hard to see how uh, po the population can survive this. It's really destabilizing, and we're also seeing terrible reports now that that population is hungry. That wasn't the case when I was there a few months ago. So this situation has gotten progressively worse, progressively more violent. You know, it's gangs uh, who are really controlling large parts of uh, the city, uh, and it's it's just very very worrying. And I think you know, it's it, it's in the Western Hemisphere. It's probably the worst situation in the Western Hemisphere and one of the worst in the world. And it really needs some, uh, they're, they're talking about this multinational uh, force to come in and try to stabilize the security situation. I think the sooner that can happen, the better. Right. Uh, is the international community paying enough attention to Haiti? You know, Mark, this is, I mean, there are so many problems in the world, and I think this is the challenge we live with all the time, right? Because we're always trying to mobilize resources for these challenges, and the public seems to have attention for sort of one thing at a time. But if you look at what's happening in uh, Gaza, what's happening in Haiti, what's happening in Sudan, what's happening still in Afghanistan, in the DRC, there are so many problems that need attention and that need resources. And I think, you know, from the perspective of UNICEF, we are working as hard as we can to help 
the children in all of these terrible situations. But we, we, we need everyone to pay attention and to support the work that we're doing. Right. You mentioned uh, Sudan. Obviously, there's a brutal uh, civil war going on there. Uh, mm -hmm. You were able to send a mission just very recently to the capital, uh, Khartoum. Uh, what are they telling you about the dire situation in that country? Well, Sudan is a, another example of, of a country that has gone in, into such a bad spot so quickly. Uh, we're now seeing the largest displacement of children in the whole world. Millions of children who've been moved from, you know, or who have left their homes, uh, either left the country, moved to Chad or Egypt or other places, or are just in other places in the country. Again, so destabilizing. It's so violent there. We're hearing terrible stories of that. We're also, again, hearing the stories of malnutrition. You know, children, as I said, they depend on resources of the government, you know, of the society. And then when that gets disrupted, they're just incredibly vulnerable. And it's very concerning. It, it, you know, it's in addition to the immediate violence they face, children also are susceptible to things like stunting and things if they don't get resources over some, or access to food over some period of time. And those are lifelong consequences that these children face. And it's really just heartbreaking to see it. Uh, and again, it's a place where the world needs to pay attention and we need to try to get the situation settled. Right. Uh, you mentioned the possibility of a potential catastrophic loss of lives in, in Sudan recently. Uh, what do you mean by catastrophic loss of lives? Hundreds, thousands more? Well, you know, from the UNICEF perspective, of course, one one child lost is a tragedy and, and one too many. But we, we are looking at many millions of children who've been moved, uh, moved around in the society who are so vulnerable, vulnerable to violence. You know, I, I can't estimate what that could look like, but it would be it would be terrible. Uh, it would be absolutely terrible. And we need to we need to do better here. Catherine Russell, Executive uh, Director of UNICEF, uh, the UN's Children's Fund. I want to thank you very much uh, for appearing <laughs> here on Tete a Tete, France 24's flagship show, and thank you all for watching it. Thanks.